Hi, everyone, and welcome to State of State. This podcast is presented by BetOnline.ag, your number one source for all your sports info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's NBA Finals and Stanley Cup Final. BetOnline is always your sports information headquarters. We have you covered for all your sports wagering needs, whether it's the NBA, Major League Baseball, the NHL, right to UFC and boxing. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options plus your favorite casino and card games that you can play right from your home head to betonline.ag today or use your mobile device to get in on the action be sure to use our promo code believe that's b-l-e-a-v to receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit state of state is presented by bet online where the game starts Also, State of State is a proud supporter of Blue White Outfitters. Blue White Outfitters was created as a retail shop meant to highlight the confidence, competitiveness, and fearlessness of the elite athletes found throughout the history of Penn State University. All sales from Blue White Outfitters directly benefit Penn State student-athletes. Visit www.bluewhiteoutfitters.com today. Penn State fans, this year the Nittany Lions are celebrating 20 years of tackling rare diseases at their annual Lift for Life on Thursday, June 22nd. This event will include a skills competition, a fitness challenge, and an opportunity for fans and the community to be involved. In-person attendance is free and open to the public. Join Penn State's football team at the Lash Football Building or make a $20 donation today to celebrate this monumental milestone. Head to pledgeit.org slash P-S-U-F-B-L-I-F-T 23. That's pledgeit.org slash P-S-U-F-B-L-I-F-T 23. The question in college football is, what is the new DBU? Well, the answer at Penn State is that we are lockdown you. We are now joined by Penn State senior cornerback Johnny Dixon, who can tell us all about what the Penn State secondary is doing. Heading into 2023, Johnny, you had a spectacular 2022. You have a fascinating story as well. As of right now, how are you feeling about everything going into this upcoming season? How are you feeling physically, mentally, emotionally? Everything good in your life? Yeah, I'm confident and I'm ready. I'm prepared. I've been waiting for this season. I'm waiting. We can't wait for it, to be honest. The whole room excited. We got depth. We got young guys, older guys, experience. I'm excited for what we got going on. It's been a fascinating development to see how there's just a guy after guy after guy that comes out of this secondary. It's not just corner. It's been safety as well, and it's why there's a lot of people that have made the argument strongly that Penn State is the new DBU. A lot of people point at Ohio State. A lot of people point at LSU. If you were to make the argument, how would you make it? I'll say it's us because it's not just – a lot of people say they DBU, but they just got some corners or they probably got a couple good safeties. No matter what position, whether it's nickel, safety, corner, we got we got real dogs everywhere. No, it's absolutely crazy. And especially, Johnny, the thing that always comes to mind with fans is the, the big flashy stats, interceptions, pass breakups. Obviously, the Penn State secondary was spectacular when it came to PBUs last year. And you led the team in terms of sacks for a defensive back. When you, you know, you see that response, whether it be on social media or just from the fans or on TV, what goes beyond that? What was more important to you as a player? It's, it's cool to see, but to be honest, I just focus on keeping my head down and trying to get better. So my, my, my mentality is what's next? Like, what can I get better on? Like, what, what other ways can I help the defense, you know? Justin, obviously you played corner at Penn State. You did it in the NFL. Uh, Your family, Terry Smith, had a hand in recruiting Johnny Dixon and bringing him from South Carolina to Penn State. Uh, When you watch Johnny's game, what do you think of it? Playmaker, man. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Playmaker, confident guy. I remember Johnny coming out of high school, going down south first. But my question to him is, like, what drew you back to Penn State through the transfer portal and that process? What was appealing to Penn State? Because you came – with a deep roster at, at DBs and you came in now you're a starting corner. And that's, that's not something that all, you know, corners do, even though it's a prerequisite to be extremely confident. So I know you're that, but what yeah. led you to Penn state? 
it was it was a couple of things. For one, as you know, I almost came right out of high school. So I it kind of already had that connection, uh, built the connection with Coach T and Coach Franklin and those type of guys. And then on top of that, I just got a respect for Penn State. And I feel like Penn State has this respect and pride for football that not every program has. So, like, that's what helped me gravitate towards Penn State. Now, that's touching on the culture piece of it. And I think that's, like, very important, when whether it's listeners that are athletes or even fans, when you talk about the different – ecosystems that people play in or fan bases. And like you said, it's, I mean, it starts down from just the culture around the program and through, through and through. I mean, you're coming from Florida, which is a heavy, uh, like football, I mean, sports state. How is it different, you know, transitioning to playing in Pennsylvania, you know, coming up from Tampa Bay, Florida, then going to South Carolina and landing in the Keystone? Honestly, the only difference is it's cold. (laughs) <laughs> like that's the only difference. It's cold. It snows. I I didn't see snow till I first got on campus here. But in all seriousness, the pride for football and love for football is the same. That's why I felt like I could relate, and I felt like it wasn't too much. It wasn't too different from the crib, you know. No, most definitely, most definitely. I mean, I always tell funny jokes like, "Hey man, anytime we get some guys up." Where Johnny, I want to say Johnny had the golds in the gold teeth when he came up on his visit coming out of high yeah, school. I'm, I'm gonna good. get him back for y'all this season. Get him <laughs> back this year for the season. No, I get yeah. some of that Florida swag up there, man. That's awesome. And so, like you were talking about the depth at in the secondary, we talk about lockdown you and all those guys. Who's somebody that's kind of jumped out to you? I mean, in the DB room, we always see who gets exposed, we see who's making plays. Who's somebody that's continuously getting their hands on uh passes as they come to them? I say Cam Smith. He's a young guy, also from Florida, Jacksonville, Florida, or around that area. But he he came in real mature. He's beyond his years for sure. And when it's me and Taylor's me and Kalen's time to leave, he's ready to take that spot. You mentioned earlier. I mean, I played obviously. I played corner at Penn State. We played a lot of single high, cover three, real basic. You know, it was left out there to cover. You guys have a nice multi look defense. What's your favorite? call that you hear typically from um, the sidelines from Manny or Coach Smith that you're like, man. this is it, ready to lock it up? Man. man Any up. man. Any man. Coach Manny know it. <laughs> they go to the sideline, <laughs> ready for him to call a man. Is that a, is that a, is that a central uh, a common thread amongst all the DBs? Like you guys are, you guys like to play man or is it kind of all over the, all over the place? I feel like we all like to play man, I would say. It's just that's where that's where we all get our confidence at. Whenever he all the third down drills, we beg for man. We don't want to play nothing but man. Whenever it's time to win, we know it call this. Nah, that's awesome, man. That, that speaks that speaks to the confidence in the room and the confidence in your abilities. Like, put it on my shoulders, coach. Don't put me in a zone and make me read. Like, let's just lock up and strap it up, lock down. Yeah. I love when it. You I better love than it. people, you just play. When you're better than people, you just play. I love to hear that, man. Tom, you gotta take it back from there. You're gonna get me too no, excited. It's <laughs> you know, Johnny, it's it's been a crowded defensive back room. I talked about Jaquan Brisker, Jair Brown, uh Joey Porter Jr. just went into the NFL draft and is hopefully gonna do some good things with the Pittsburgh Steelers. You got Kalen King, you got yourself. Uh, is there somebody on the team that in, in the in terms of the defensive backs that you think doesn't get the uh, the credit or the love that they deserve from the outside world. I say Dede, just because what he does. Take like, one Hardy. Yeah, it's easy to look over because he's in the slot, but it's important. The slot is a lot harder, in my opinion, than the outside. You guarding the whole route tree, and he goes out there and does it week in and week out, and no one really gets the best of him. So I would say him. It's crazy the way that college football is now because I, I've said it before is that Daquan is good enough to play anywhere in the country and that's a as a nickel corner to your point that's extraordinarily valuable and Justin and I have talked about that when you get to the NFL ranks if you don't have that solid nickel slot corner you're dead it's great to have one or two solid defensive backs but if you don't have that third guy uh, and I think Penn State would be in some trouble if they didn't have Daquan Hardy there and this is the guy who could go anywhere he wants. Uh, you know what it's like going into the transfer portal, and especially you did it right after the 2020 season, coming from the SEC and going to the Big Ten. Can you walk the average fan through what the transfer portal experience was for you? Because for me, I don't know necessarily like what website are you going on? Who are you? What are you clicking on? What are you uploading? Like, tell me how this works. Um, 
See, I for me, I got like a different experience than some other people because I kind of like I was in a decent situation in South Carolina. Like I was playing, I had some film. So it was a smooth transition. Like right when um my name hit the portal, that still that still kind of confused me to the portal. Like I don't really know. Like <laughs> right when my name was in there though, I got like, like a thousand calls from some schools, and then Penn State, of course, was the one that caught my eye. Are you a fan of rivalries? Are you a fan of smack talk? Do you like to stand out from the crowd at tailgates? If so, check out Smack Apparel and see what their team has geared up for football season. Their Let There Be White tee is the perfect gear for all those famous whiteout games at Beaver Stadium. Or get straight to the point with the worst tee for all the Ohio State haters out there. Smack Apparel has the must-have tees for all your teams, including pro and college football, plus basketball, baseball, every fan is covered. Head over to smackapparel.com and use the promo code STATE10, that's S-T-A-T-E-1-0, at checkout for 10% off. Again, that's smackapparel.com, promo code STATE10, at checkout. Why we're boring when you can wear smack. Are you looking for undeniably good hair and beard care? Then Maestro's Classic is perfect for you. Maestro's has beard washes, beard oils, beard butters, plus hair gels and pomades. It's one brand for every man. Visit maestrosclassic.com. That's M-A-E-S-T-R-O-S classic.com and use our promo code STATE20. That's S-T-A-T-E-2-0 at checkout for 20% off your order. Maestro's Classic, crafting a better you. In terms of the rest of the guys that you're working around, what have you taken away from guys like Joey Porter Jr., like Jaquan Brisker, like Jair Brown? Just to compete, to be honest with you. And I feel like it goes deeper than that, even back to like the South Carolina days. Like to get on the field, I had to compete against guys like J.C. Horn and Israel McQuamu. And then I got here and it was Joey Porter, Tariq. So it's just like, I feel like you got to be willing to compete. And even if things don't go your way, you got to figure out how to become the one, how to become the guy, like know your strengths and do what you got to do. That's a great point, man. Knowing your strengths, especially on the back end. I mean, you're the last line of defense. How is it? I mean, we got special, there's special players at every level in the defensive line and the linebackers. Who's some guys on the front seven that have stuck out to you where it's like, oh man, it's easy to cover back here. I remember my freshman year, it wasn't too hard to cover with Tom Bahali coming off one edge and, you know, Jason Albert and, this guy's coming off the uh, edge. How is it for you with the linebackers and even with Manny and his blitz packages that he throws at guys? Um, I like I like watching Akeem Beeman. I feel like the work he does sometimes goes unnoticed, but he's winning his battles down there. Adisa Isaac. I love watching Kurt communicate. I love watching the dual blitz, stuff like that. Some some people is just made to do some stuff when it comes to blitzing. Abdul's made the blitz. <laughs> Blitzing yeah. is a skill. It's like a real yeah. skill. Like the timing getting tight off the hips of like uh, Texan uh, defense alignment and different things of that nature. And I wanted to jump yeah. back to something that you said earlier about Daquan Hardy, like kind of dive into that nickel position. So I think that's kind of the point you were making earlier about being locked down you across the board, having a star, both corners with their safeties that can make plays. That star position, I mean, we talk about being a, like a football player, how it can be exploited. I mean, you're essentially a linebacker playing DB, but across the board with the back end secondary, is there any guys that I guess, who's, who's, the, who's the clown amongst the group? Because like you have to have dynamic personalities, right, to play, but at the same time, you have to be serious. You have to lock down. You have to be cerebral in the front, cerebral in the back, but you also have to be extremely loose and confident in your abilities. Like you said, man, all you guys want to play, man, that's an athletic-based type of situation, but, like, give us a little breakdown or the fans of the personalities in the room. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably say the clown. The clown got to be K. Got to be K. <laughs> like, he's just, like, he's funny, like, naturally. Like, he, bring, he brings energy to the room. Day Day as well brings energy to the room. Uh, Cam is like Cam's interesting because he's like he gives old head vibes, but he's young. You feel me? But like, <laughs> but he's cool. Uh, yeah, I'll say that. K nah, is K. K is the clown. He he definitely brings the uh, humor to the room. Nah, that's needed, man. It gets it gets tight in there. I mean, always 
I mean, playing in the league or whatever, just like you gotta have that back insight, whether you're congratulating each other, because we always know there's a day where you might get beat. So just understanding the personalities, like you said, working together, making sure the safety's got uh help over top of you, make sure Abdul's blitzing and all that good stuff. Any mm-hmm. insight that you can give the fans and um just listeners on maybe how you guys, I mean, with Coach Smith being the coach and all that good stuff, like how you guys approach the room with him um, being your coach. Uh, To be honest, Coach Smith gives you, like, extra confidence. Like, when Coach Smith puts you on the field, he wants you to be you. Like, he doesn't put a format out there and say, you got to play corner like this. He wants you to go out there and – play the technique that you've practiced, of course, but still be you and do what you do. Like, it's some guys he knows the ball's in the air, they about to go pick it off. It's some guys he knows they not even going to let the ball get close to being caught. You know, it's just too different. He's – I like playing under Coach Smith. He's, he's, he lets you play with uh, freeness, free will. That's good. I mean, especially at corner, right, or DB, just having the confidence to – you have to have confidence to even make a mistake because you have to have you have to have the confidence to make a mistake in order to make a play because like yeah. before you jump anything, a slight chance that that wrong. might be, yeah. <laughs> you might be wrong. So like coaching that confidence that's a that's a critical piece. Shout out to Coach Smith on that one. Um, so keep it moving. I mean, let's jump to the linebackers a little bit. Just playing on the back end, playing with dynamic linebackers really helps for corner sake, right? Tackle them running backs before they get out on the edge, get those big guys down and all that good stuff. When you're seeing like a guy like Abdul Carter blitzing at 250 and all that good stuff causing havoc, like how does it feel to cover behind that? It gives you confidence because you know you don't got to cover for too long. You know, <laughs> like uh, a DB, a good DB group always has a good D line and they got good backers because if they don't got to cover too long, they're going to be the best group. Anybody out there covering for five, six seconds, probably not going to be the best group. <laughs> So it's just it just gives you extra confidence knowing that if they call a certain blitz, I'm sure Abdul is going to get there, or I'm I'm sure someone's going to get to the quarterback. Nah, that, that's that's great, and it's I mean, and I get the listeners like a little insight. How has Coach Franklin been with Coach Manny Diaz being a defensive coordinator and coming in from like an offensive coach's standpoint? I'm always interested to hear when new defensive coordinators come in, especially ones that are effective like Manny Diaz. I mean. Is he guys like is he offense or is he like dealing with the defense? Is he always on you guys about beating up the receivers? Like, what's the deal there? Manny's the Manny's the head coach of the defense. So, and you know, Franklin's an offensive guy. So when we <laughs> practice, it really feel like war out there. Like we really out there competing, and that's what makes us better. That's that adds the like everything about our program is competition, and that's what I love about it the most. So. Everything just fuels that, especially with Manny being so defensive minded. He hates to lose, so it just makes every day that much better. Oh, that's awesome, man. Tom, back at you, Johnny. Outside of obviously Justin, um, are there former Penn State defensive backs or even defensive backs that are currently in the, in the NFL or guys that are retired at this point that you confide in? Guys that will give you feedback on your play on your tape? Yeah, Jaquan Brisker. That's that's my boy. He was kind of he kind of took me under his wing when I first got in here. I was always around uh, him. He showed me the ropes to how Penn State worked and that that type of stuff. If I'm ever tripping in a game, I get a text from him right after the game saying what I was doing. If I did good, I get a text right after. Let me know. So that's I say him. That's fantastic. Have you had a chance to interact all that much with Alan Zemitis? Oh, AZ, yeah, that's my boy. You know, he played in Tampa, so he knows. <laughs> Yeah, that was my boy. When I when I first got here, not even when I first got here, last spring we watched film uh, after practice and stuff together. So he just gives me tips on how I can make plays on the ball and stuff like that. He's real smart when it comes to football. Uh, he's fantastic. He was stellar yeah. in his heyday at Penn State. Uh, you talked about Tampa. There's a lot of Penn State football fans. There's a lot of football fans who look at the state of Florida and just assume that it's a gold mine for football talent, specifically uh, the Tampa, Florida area. However, it's not that easy to get out of there and to get noticed to get to a point where you do get to, for you, uh, an SEC school like South Carolina, to a Big Ten school like Penn State. Just how difficult is it to get out of that situation? It's difficult because it's... It's a lot of talent and it's a lot of guys that want to be the guy, you know? Mm-hmm. So 
I was blessed. I was, I had connections that was able to take me around to colleges, get me out of Tampa and put me like right in the face of college coaches so I could show them what I could do. And that's how I ended up getting a lot of offers early on in high school. But it's definitely a lot of talent out there and it's hard for some kids to get noticed because they just don't have the connections to get outside of Tampa, you know? And before we started recording, you were talking a little bit about trying to give back to the community in Tampa, Florida. What exactly have you been doing as of late? Uh, I mentor players for my seven on my old seven on seven team, Team Tampa. That's kind of that helped us get e Elliot Washington here. I call him Eli, but everybody know him as Elliot Washington. That helped us get him here, but um, stuff like that. And then my major is RPTM, so I wanted to eventually build parks within the city because when I was growing up. You had to go to like a certain field to get a good football field or a certain basketball court. You know, I want to build a park that has everything in one. People can just go and do what they got to do. That's fantastic. That's beautiful, man. Uh, as the summer goes on and you get ready for training camp, what are you doing right now to get yourself ready for this upcoming season? Working out every day. We got, we got the team workouts. I usually get the corner, well, the corners, we're a tight-knit group. We usually get some extra work after with each other, get each other better, whether it's jugs or it's footwork, whatever we got to do. We make sure we get our work in after every day because the whole goal is to outwork the next guy. Speaking of outworking other guys, are you, how do you think you're going to do it Lift for Life? Are you taking part in Lift for Life this year, June 22nd? Yeah, I'm going to take part. I'm going to uh, try to throw that 225 up sometimes. Okay. All right. Yeah, I didn't know how competitive that would get amongst the guys, but I imagine it does. Yeah. It, it doesn't really get competitive to you down there, though. Like, right now, it's all jokes, but once you get down on that bench, nobody want to lose. Okay. All right. Now, if there's people watching this that do want to donate for Lift for Life, why should they donate for your reps specifically? Why should they be backing Johnny Dixon? I'm going to give you some good reps, some good quality <laughs> reps. That's what I was I mean, I'm not the biggest, but I'm just in this body. I'm going to give you some good reps, though. So, yeah. <laughs> Justin, I, I assumed you did a couple Lift for Lives, right? I did Lift for Lives, but ours weren't necessarily fun at all. I mean, they were for a great cause, but uh, guys were throwing up in the – garbage cans Whoa. it was like a hard workout like it was it was something we, we actually didn't look forward to it if i'm gonna be completely honest it was like yeah it's a great cause but we we're going to be in pain jt and all those guys jeremy i mean shout out to those to the old crew but yeah it wasn't fun <laughs> I'm glad we don't go through that yeah no. right it was it was worse than a, it was worse than a normal workout yeah that like, sounds bad <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, Johnny, as you guys are going into 2023, I know uh, Coach Franklin, if guys were talking about big aspirations like a Big Ten title, a college football playoff appearance, a national title appearance, a national title win, all those things, that he get real ticked off. So I don't want you to be in that type of situation. However, what are your goals for individually and for the team in 2023? My goal is to – my goal specifically, I want to – know the defense inside and out so I can just help elevate the defense and help teach younger guys because at the end of the day, everybody needs to play. Everybody needs to get on the field because depth helps win championships too, I feel like. And then I just want to become the best player I can so I can do my part. That's really all. That's really all there is to it. Beautiful. Johnny, we really appreciate the time. Best of luck uh, at Lift for Life. Get those reps up. Uh, best of luck in training camp, and uh, best of luck in the 2023 season, man. We appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Jumping appreciate on. You. Lockdown you. Here we go. Of course. Thank you all so much for joining us. This episode and our entire library of shows is available now on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, TuneIn, and wherever else you get your podcasts. And of course, let us know what you think of the show on Twitter, at TheKing1 and at Tom Hannafin. State of State is presented by Bet Online.